Hi, I'm Bill Gibson, Senior Certified Master Technician here at Mike Thompson's RV in Colton, California. And in our service department today, we are going to show you how to service your water heater. There are two main brands of water heaters that we use. One is a Suburban, the other is an Atwood. And we'll show you how to clean the burner tubes on both and how to flush them both. A few minutes spent in your driveway doing this can save you a lot of aggravation in the campground. Maintenance is the key. All right, first of all, before we get started, here at Mike Thompson's, we're all about safety. So what you really need to have is your safety glasses, always. And then we're gonna be working on some appliances, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that that appliance is not gonna come on while you're working on it. So first thing you should do is shut off the propane. The second thing to do would be to unplug your coach. And the third thing to do would be to uh, shut off your batteries if possible. You don't want the appliance coming on while you're servicing it. Now we're gonna be working on the water heater, so another very important thing to do is to make sure you have no hot water inside your water heater. We are gonna be draining water out of it, and we don't want anybody to get burned. All right, the best way to know that you don't have any hot water in your hot water heater is to make sure it's shut off, and then go to one of your taps inside the coach and run fresh water through the hot water side until it is no longer hot. First, I'm gonna show you how to replace the anode rod on a suburban water heater. There could be water pressure, so you wanna make sure, and always make sure, even if you've drained it off, that there is no pressure. Put on your safety glasses. Right here is your pop-off valve. This is a pressure relief valve. It has a little lever on the end of it, so you always wanna pull that. This will also help you double check that you don't have any hot water inside. All right, to take out the anode rod in your suburban water heater, it takes a one and one sixteenth socket. I'll show you how to break it loose. You want to break it loose till it's hand tight, and then you pull it out by hand. Let me show you. All right, now that you have the anode rod broke loose, what you need to do is you're going to twist it out by hand, but you want to make sure that the pressure is relieved. So pull up on the lever on your pop-off valve, and then slowly back out the anode rod. Now step back a little bit because there's probably going to be a little bit of fluid coming out of here. Okay, then drain your water heater until all of the residue comes out. All right, while we're letting this water heater drain, let me show you the difference. This is a spent anode rod. You can see it's pretty used up. It's done its job. This is your new anode rod. Make sure that you put some thread sealer around the, the threads. We use Teflon tape here, that's what's recommended. All right, to install your new anode rod, you simply slide it in, thread it in hand tight, just like you took it out. Okay, remember this is a one and one sixteenth socket. You want it to be fairly snug. After you've got your anode rod installed, you wanna go ahead and make sure that your pop-off lever is put back in place. All right, now we have the anode rod changed. The next part of this service would be to clear any debris from the burner tube and burner chamber. You want to make sure and stand off to the side when you do this because debris will come out. Uh, we usually use uh, compressed air. This is the burner tube. As you can see, quite a bit comes out. This is the burner chamber. All right, well, the last part of this service is basically just to clean it up, and a clean appliance is always good, so we'll use a little bit of cleaner. All right, um, two different types of water heaters in motorhomes and trailers. The most common are the Suburban, which we just showed you, and then now this is the Atwood. The only major difference is, is Atwoods do not use an anode rod. So that's going to be one step less we have to worry about. We will drain the tank, but we do not have to replace the anode rod. All right, you can do this either way you want. Uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and clean out the burner tube first, then the burner chamber, and then we'll go ahead and drain the tank. This here is your burner tube. By putting the tip of the air gun here, you apply your pressure. This here is your burner chamber. Same thing here. 
Okay, that takes care of that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drain our tank. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, of course, make sure the pressure is relieved here. Then you're going to loosen your plug, which is a 7 8 and you're just going to loosen it to hand tight. All right, once you have your plug hand tight, you want to go ahead and, at the same time, pull your relief valve, and then loosen your plug the rest of the way. All right, once you've let the tank completely drain, you want to put in your new plug. Uh, this is a half inch plug. We have Teflon tape to seal the threads. Now, uh, here we go. All right, and then you want to tighten your plug all the way down. All right, there we go. All right, last thing to do on your uh, service is to go ahead and clean up your appliances. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of uh, uh, cleaner on there and then just wipe it down. Okay, here at Mike Thompson's, whenever we maintain anything or work on any appliance, we always have to test it afterwards. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, what you're looking for is you're looking for a strong blue flame Yellow flame indicates some type of obstruction in the burner tube. If you see this after you've serviced your water heater, you might want to bring it into us and have us take a look at it.